What's up? I'm back. This segment, I'm going to talk about Daredevil for Netflix, the Marvel show for Netflix. Finished watching it this weekend. I've always said before this all started, I said a long time ago, I said, the Netflix series, the Marvel and Netflix partnership is Marvel's secret weapon. I said this when I first heard it, and it's funny because you're talking about second tier characters, so people didn't really pay attention. But I said, as a creator, you can see it. You don't have as much restraints on Netflix. And Daredevil, I mean, classic. There's no, there's no doubt about it. I was so excited watching it. It felt like a movie. I'm not going to lie. When it came out Friday, it felt like one of the movies. Like, when it came out Friday, I, I had my day scheduled. I said, all right, I'm going to do certain things on Friday by nighttime. Come home and watch it. Saturday, watch it. And then Sunday, watch the rest. So I knew I was going to watch all 13 episodes in one weekend, and I did. And I have to admit, it was impressive. Like, there's not that much. I mean, I can't really think of almost anything negative to say. The only negative thing I could say, and it's not really negative. This is me, me just cherry picking, right? And then picking, I'm sorry. I would say this. I know they want to make it a disconnected from... Disconnected in the sense that Daredevil and the whole Netflix series, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, it's going to be set in the streets of Marvel, meaning it's, it's going to talk about what's going on locally in Marvel. How the Avengers and Thor, all these people, they know they exist, obviously, right? But they're not as present in, in everyday life, which I think is genius. Only thing I would say about that when watching Daredevil is they should have probably got mentioned a few more times, to be honest. It's being realistic. We're in a celebrity culture. Don't tell me if Hell's Kitchen they have a whole bunch of explosions. No one's going to say, hey, what about Captain America or the Avengers? Can they help us? At least mention them once or twice. But that's nitpicking. Like, that's, you know, I understand what they're trying to do, and it's probably better, to be honest, because I'm a fan. I'm a comic fan, right? But. When I looked at the reviews on Daredevil online, I mean, it was exciting. People were, like, excited about it. And what I really like about it is the fact that, in a sense, Marvel did what I told people they are going to do. Marvel's criticism up until this point was their, their shows are not serious. Their shows are not made for adults. And I told people this a long time ago. Marvel, mark my words, people may not want to admit it. Right now, there's no studio who could touch them. We're talking about studios who might make so quote unquote quality movies. If you look at almost every movie Marvel has done so far, their movies are in the eighties. Like when you talk about what the critics say, you're talking about and the critics are looking for something. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, the critics are actually looking for something, right? And they give their movies eighty, ninety, like consistently. You know, if, if someone has one or two good movies, you say, All right, maybe, you know, they're good but you still question it. You're talking about like a run that's began from I mean for a while now. I mean, you talk about Cap, Iron Man, Avengers. Like, you talk about a good run. Now, Iron Man's had a few bad movies. I think Iron Man is probably the one that's been bad. But in a sense, in a sense, it's still like a bad Iron Man movie. It's just because you have such expectations for it. Is it really bad? Probably not. Daredevil, the movie. Now, that was a bad movie, <laughs> to be honest, right? So, the TV show, I always told people, they're playing chess. They got, because their formula is the, is the, is the fun stuff. Let's be real. They're making crazy money, right? As much as people talk shit, their movies kill it. You talking about because to me, I'm not all about sales. Right? I'm all about what critics say. I'm all about what the fans say. To me, it's all a combination of all three. For the most part, they got all three locked, right? Even their naysayers are just people who just want to be naysayers to be naysayers. Why do I say that? Because they come out with something like Daredevil. Their critique was they don't make serious movies. Daredevil came in as a straight up serious movie, basically smoking. I mean, smoking the arrow and flash. Trust me, smoking the arrow and flash. And then kind of making, kind of like a movie style of Batman. But the reason why, as much as people like Christopher Nolan's Batman, let's keep it real. Daredevil, it's more, Daredevil's strength was, you know, he's kind of like almost human, basically. His, his, he has powers, but it's not, he's not shooting anything out of his hands. He's basically has human strength. In a way, Batman is even more superpower than Daredevil. No, Daredevil has powers, Batman doesn't. But because Batman's rich, because Batman could buy jets and stuff like that, it still feels like there's some distance. With Daredevil, especially in the first two, three episodes when we saw those fighting scenes, that was just like a dude in a costume. And I think there's a realness to that. And I think when you come back with Jessica Jones and Luke Cage, it's going to continue that. Iron Fist, 
I think could be actually the best of all four of them. But I know that's kind of more mystical. So I'm curious to see how they're going to translate that, to be honest. But then when they come back with the Defenders, I mean, yeah, Defenders is going to be awesome. I told people I was more excited for the Defenders than Avengers, <laughs> believe it or not. Because I, I think with movies, I think here's the thing. I think with movies, you see it once, right? You go out there, you get hyped, but it's done, right? It's good if you're into stuff like box office and money and stuff like that. But as a fan, I think a good TV show is more lasting. I think with their success with Daredevil, I mean, they can't be stopped. Like, I even when I made a video about the Inhumans versus X-Men, I had people say, oh, X-Men films are better than goofy Marvel films. I when I, you know, I like to look at people's responses to certain things, and I could tell people can't really see greatness, to be honest. They can't. Because anyone can... X-Men, to me, is the premier Marvel combo co- property. If you talk about Marvel comic books, you can talk about Spider-Man or whatever other type of stuff. X-Men got me into reading comics. It's almost impossible to mess X-Men up. That doesn't mean you know what you're doing. Now, people said X-Movies are good. Yes. But to me, if Marvel was in control of it, X-Movies would be great. Why? You guys act like X-Men is that dark to begin with. It's a little dark, but most of it's still PG. It's not rated R. <laughs> Let's keep it real. <laughs> it's not like it's rated R. Like, when you look at Daredevil, you see the blood, the limbs. Like, they didn't even make Wolverine. Wolverine should be like that. Wolverine, should, you should be like, you know what? We can't do Wolverine PG. We got to make it rated R. And just say, F it. Let's do it. Fox didn't do that. So I just think sometimes we're in a world where, and that's why I want all of you guys to realize if you're going to greatness, you're always going to have naysayers and say, oh, you know, you could do this better, you could do this better. In the end of the day, Marvel is showing that they're great. Daredevil, Charlie Cox, like it was, the cast was impressive. I can't even say there was no, there wasn't anybody, like the, the actor playing Kingpin to me was actually more impressive than Charlie Cox playing Daredevil. Like, I think he hit Kingpin on the, on the, on the nail. Not that Kingpin was depicted like that in the comics, but I think in the TV show, it's probably better to go like that, like where he's kind of like half monster, half child, but he's still intimidating. And it gives you, and it, and it kind of makes you like an awkward, like, it's awkward, but then he's actually still running New York. I mean, I don't think you could, I don't think you could beat that. So I must admit, I expected it to be good. I expected it to be, I expected it to be really good. I didn't expect it to be great. And it's just funny because I actually think this is Marvel's future. People may say, really? I say, yeah. I, I think eventually, no matter how good you are, you're going to go down. Right? And I think their movies will eventually, like, they've made a run. I mean, they've made it a legendary run already. It may continue for a little bit. But I do think you see little signs that the movies... They hit their peak. I don't think they're getting higher. They're probably at this point eventually gonna go to go down, right? But I do think with the TV shows, with their niche, with their partnership with Netflix, both Netflix. I mean, I've seen people say they got Netflix just because Daredevil is coming out. To be honest, and I think Netflix has a lot of shows. I didn't check out Bloodlines yet. I heard that's pretty good. Even though they've had a lot of shows, to me, Orange New Black and uh, House of Cards are the ones that stand out. The other ones, in my opinion. Marco Polo, maybe. I liked Marco Polo. Marco Polo, the critics didn't like it. Netflix said the people liked it. I know they said that, but it cost $90 million to make Marco Polo. I don't really know. You could put the, it is a third show, and I know they were trying to make it like their version of Game of Thrones, but I'm going to talk about Game of Thrones in my next video. But there's no question, Marco Polo is good, but it's not Game of Thrones. And I think Daredevil kind of like now is that third series, to be honest, right? And I, I, to me, it's probably over Orange New Black. I don't know if it's over House of Cards, though. But it's definitely over Orange New Black. And I think Netflix, this is going to help both both companies. And I do think eventually when the movies start to go down, they will still have a market for TV shows. And if you're a fan, that's all you care about. At the end of the day, fans are talking about box office this, box office that. But you just want to see your combo characters on the screen. Whether it's a big screen or small screen. And I do think... With this being such a success, you're not gonna, you're just gonna see more Marvel Netflix series, to be honest. And that only, that only helps all fans, you know, to get something a good quality product. Because at the end of the day, there's no restrictions. You know, like I love Arrow, I love Flash, but I can see sometimes the network CWs 
putting in their little non romance and the little teen stuff. Even if the people are not teens, they kind of look like it. You can kind of still see CW's uh, influence. But Netflix is like they they give them the keys and say, "Little make something great." And Daredevil the series, awesome, awesome, awesome. Two thumbs up.